Say, I'm standing. I'm standing. No matter the wind that is blowing, say, I'm standing. I'm standing. No matter the storm that is blowing, say, I'm standing. I'm standing. Shout again, say, I'm standing. I'm standing. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we're talking on stand on the word. Hallelujah. Stand on what? Don't just be standing and we want to stand on something. And we're standing on what? On the word. Today, I want to do a build-up. I discover something about, about God is that God is so mighty, so big, so awesome, but he presents himself in the little things. If you're looking for God, he says that they had a storm blowing, they had everything, and mighty wind, they, 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 they ran there because of the magnitude of the impact, but they couldn't find him. Sometimes when you're looking for God and you're running elter skelter, all you just need to do is to wait for the little things. He said, but when they calm down, And the one that slept woke up in the morning and saw God in her first breath. I'm alive. And that is God. Lift up his hands and see that the hands can move. That is God. You sit at your, at your table and you see food and you are hungry. You are hungry. That is God. Some are afraid to eat. They are afraid to eat. Why? When they eat, to process it is a problem. Some have appointment for dialysis every week because they're what? They're eating. So when you see God in minute things, then you know how big your God is. When you have shoes to wear and you can see God in it. When you can see your children and they're trouble, you're supposed to sleep in and they're disturbing you. And you can see God in it. So you say, get out of here. I want to sleep. You can see God. Because some people sleep, there's no one to wake them up. Am I speaking to someone today? Yes, sir. When you want to know God, you know God from the basic things. Anyone that can't praise God in the little things can go far with God. Don't wait for a brand new car to praise God. No. Don't wait for things to praise God. They are, he said, they are hearted. Say hearted. Hearted is, is, is not the main thing. They are hard dead. When you have God, you have everything. So I want, to, I want to go back to the basics. So when we're talking of standing on the word, we have clear understanding of what we're standing on. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, he says that our Lord Jesus introduced himself. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. One thing is that this is the first time he will introduce himself in this world. And it was immediately after resurrection. He says, I am the Alpha. And most, some of us know that Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet. And Omega is the last letter in the in the Greek alphabet. 
Before when I, I you know, when I, I'm running with God, and I just God speak a word, you know, it's, make, no, just, just give me a full history, you know, tell me what you want to do, I would, when I discovered, he didn't say, is the whole word. He says, is the alpha. I'll say it again. I will bless you. Someone say amen. 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 That's a word. Amen. He didn't say, I'm the, I will bless you. He said, I'm I. If all you receive is I, that's the alpha. The first alpha, but not the first sentence. I will bless you. The T can be removed. Because the T is God. You need to understand the basics. He's saying that if I've given you a promise, nothing can be removed from the middle. See, when God has promised you something, sometimes the enemy makes you to believe that it can be remodified. That it it, it still happens, but you no, know, but not completely. You, know, you just still have it. But he said, "No, when I bless you, nothing can be removed. Nothing I have given to you, nothing inside, can be lost. Because I am Alpha. I'm one." Alphabet in the whole promise is God. Mm, is what? Is God. I'm telling someone today, you need to go back to your promise books and be check and speak to it. Nothing can be removed. That's why when he was explaining to us of who he is, he says, when he promised you, he says, not what a dot. Not what a dot will go without being fulfilled. Not a dot. Not a comma. Not a strike. Hallelujah. Not a dot. Someone today, I'm asked to tell you, God will fulfill his promise. He will do what? Fulfill his promise. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the ending of every promise. See the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. He's in the beginning of everything. He's at the end of everything. He's in the past of everything. Hallelujah. He's in the present of everything. And he's in the what? In the future of everything. Let's all shout hallelujah for that. In this, in this verse, the Lord had shown us Five dimensions of operations of God. Say five dimensions. He has explained to us that in each dimension, I can do everything that I'm doing in each dimension. I am God in the beginning. I am God in the end. I am God now. I am God yesterday in the past. And I'm God tomorrow. Hallelujah. If there is any area in your life 
that you need God to move. Discover which dimension is it. Which what? Whatever you are going through is in which dimension? In any dimension, I am God. So when you are standing, you are standing because you know, you know, you know. My God is God. If someone is threatening you and, and is telling you, oh, and tomorrow, um, maybe something evil wants to happen. Oh, you lose your job tomorrow. Ask that person, what dimension is tomorrow? The future. Who is in control of that, of that dimension? I don't know if you get what I'm saying. If, if, it's, if, it's, a, if it's a threat of what? Of tomorrow. It's a dimension. Who? I am God in tomorrow. Amen. If someone said, oh, you are a child, you are a small boy. Who are you? You don't know anything. Before you were born, we did something in your village and we took the blood of some, something. I said, no problem. What is that? <laughs> in the dimension of the past, who is in charge? God. <laughs> Am I, am I speaking to someone? Yes, I don't know what dimension you are being threatened. I don't know what dimension you are being threatened. If they come to you and say, oh, why did, that letter, did you send it? I, I sent it. What did you write? Ah, you made a mistake. Ah, that letter that you wrote is the problem. Ah, and they received it. Ask the person. What dimension is the letter? In the past. Hallelujah. Who is in control of the past? Let someone shout hallelujah for that. So it says, I am in control of all that dimension. I'm the alpha and the omega. The beginning and the, the end. In John 1, 1, John chapter 1 verse 1, when it says beginning, it says again, John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So here he's saying to, to us, Christ is the beginning. That was Revelation 1.8. Christ and the Alpha, the Omega. Christ is the beginning. John 1.1 1, 1 is saying, the beginning is the word. I'll come again. <laughs> I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning. Hallelujah. So, the begin Christ is the beginning. That's, that, that, that was the first encounter John had with him. Christ says, I'm the beginning. And he's not saying that that beginning is what? Is the word. You need to get this right. Is what? Is the word. The same way that God is in control of the five dimensions. Get this one very well. The same way God is in control of the five dimensions. The word of God rules in those dimensions. Hallelujah. The word of God rules in the five dimensions. That's why when you have the word, nothing is too late. And nothing is never. Nothing is beyond a turning around. Yeah. He's saying to someone, if it's something that is in the past, the word is what? In charge. Hallelujah. The word is what? In charge. The word is what? In charge. If it's right now, 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 the word is what? In charge. In charge. Say the word is in control. Say it loud and clear. Say the word is in control. Like the testimony of our brother about when the car was going and the car was about to stop. That is now, now. I used to that's the word. The word is what? In control. Say the word is in control. Say the word is in control. Say, shout loud and say the word is in control. Say, say the word is in control. 
That's why the, 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 the word for today is stand on the word. Stand on the word. Stand on the word. See, you stand on the word in two ways. In these five dimensions. I want you to also remember the five dimensions. The beginning, the one, the end, the present, the past, the present, and the future. Did I get, did I get the five right? So there's five dimensions. Clap ca- ca- for me. And in that five dimensions, please, I want you to note this revelation. As brief it might be, it's something that it will, if you understand it and catch it, it, it will bring revolution in your, in your spiritual life. You become, your, your audacity of faith will move to another level, as simple as it is. In each of these dimensions, you stand on faith in two ways. You stand on faith in two ways. The first way is that you stand on the word in two ways. The word has the ability to create in all the five dimensions. The word has the ability to do what? To create. The word has the ability to do what? To create. Say create. Create. Say it one more time. Then the second way the word works in those dimensions, which I want you to begin to implement them, the world has the ability to control. Say control. control. Say it again. So, so, in any dimension that you are in, not one thing, the world creates and controls. Things might be going a wire. The world can stabilize it. There might be Words spoken about tomorrow, this is going to happen. Oh, Nigeria, we do this, all those kind of threatening things. The word of God can stabilize, stabilizer. Mm, hallelujah. See, for those that understand energy, when high current comes, it comes to destroy, right? Yes, sir. But if it enters a stabilizer, hey. <laughs> no matter high or low, the TV will not, will not blow. Hey. Am I talking somewhere here? Yes, sir. The fridge will not be damaged. <laughs> it will do what? Stabilize it. Mm. Thank you, sir. Say stabilize. stabilize. So the world has the ability to control. Say control. control. Remember, this activity happens in the all the five dimensions. Whichever dimensions you need help for, the world can control that dimension. The world can create in that dimension. So I just give us, because of time, I just give us one illustration for us to see how the world creates and how the world controls. A story of a woman called the Shunammite woman. In 2 Kings, chapter 4, 14. A woman that was so nice to Elisha. When Elisha was passing, he would stop by, bless him. Now he says, okay, what will I do for this man of God? Built a small house for, for him. And um, so he can stay there. But what he says, and he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, very surely has Verily, she had no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door and he said, Let's all shout earlier for that. The world has the ability to do, to create from nothing, to make impossibility possible. The husband is old. They have passed the time. And 
if you go on, on this scripture, you discover that the woman has lost hope and has lost desire. See, we know so, sometimes when you lose hope to a certain extent, the desire dies. Because the desire has become a torment in your life. That's why I've, I've met people that are believing God for maybe a child or a spouse. But if you ask them, what, you want, what, what, what prayer point do you have? They'll never mention it. If you say, I want to pray for those that are believing God for a spouse, they will not come out. Say, so if you're believing God for the fruit of the womb, I believe God wants to do something, they won't, they won't move. Because the desire had tormented them to an extent that they have removed it among the desire of their hearts. That was where this woman is. Because if you read this, when the pastor said, God will do it, he said, stop, stop. Don't take me back to a place where I will not begin to hope. Then I will not be disappointed. See, I'm better off not desiring it than stretching forth my hand and not touching it. But there is a God that can step into a mess and rearrange things. That's what God is doing in someone's life today. Verse 15 15 says, And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, Thou shalt embrace a son. That is a world working in the present to create. Say create. Say, 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 say create. Verse 17 says, And she said, No, my Lord. Thou man of God, do not lie unto, unto thy handmaid. And the, but, and the woman did what? Even in her unbelief, the word does create. And the woman conceived. The woman that conceived, like you can say the woman received the word. She received the word. Someone today, you need to receive a promise. Either your mind, your thinking can capture it. Either your heart is beating fast that, ah, this thing sounds too strange. But if you can only receive it, it's like a seed put in the earth. The earth receives it. Then the, then the seed does what? It breaks forth. It burns. Then creativity starts. But you first need to receive it. I speak to someone today God will do it. God will do it. If the only thing you can that enters your womb is it, is alpha. Amen. Whatever it is. Even if it's, the, if, it's the, if it's the eye that enters, your heart, your the eye, the eye can be invention. Amen. Amen. I speak one more time. Everything that you have given up hope on, everything that you have said, this cannot happen in my lifetime. Everything that you have closed the book on, God will jump start it again. Amen. He will do it again. Amen. It says, and she did what she received it. It entered. She conceived. The, the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the, to the time of life. I jumped to verse. 20, it says, verse 20 says, and when he had he had taken him and brought him to his mother, this, I'm fast forwarding because something happened to the boy, 
boy suddenly, suddenly fell sick with the father and they brought the boy to the mother. He says, he sat on our knees till noon and then died. This is crisis time. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out and called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, wherefore will thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, say control. control. Say control. control. This is crisis time. Trouble time, shaky time. The woman said, What? It is what? It shall be well. Say the word controls. Say the word controls. See, the word is like embalmment. You see, when someone dies, the next thing is that it begins to decay. The liver, the blood clot. But, and the next thing begins to smear. But you see, embalmment, it, it will freeze, it will freeze the process. You have to have been bam for one year. You freeze it. It won't, it, won't, it won't grow. It won't decay more than where it is. It will remain there. When she said, it shall be well, where the boy, where that death stopped, there was a pause. When the woman left and went to meet Elijah, and Elijah sent some uh, Gazi and met her again. Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the house? Is it well with the boy? She answered again. It is well. And another word, pause. That was why when she got to the man of God, if you read that scripture very well, God time. She held the man's leg and Gaius was to pull him out. He said, uh, pull her out. He said, leave her. Her heart is grievous. The next that came out of her, of her mother, ah, what, were you not the one that promised me? You, you are the one that gave me a word. He said, stand on the word. Read that, go back and read that place very well. For not once, one second did the word death come out from her mouth. If you read the scripture very well, she never for once communicated with, the, with, with Elijah that the son died. She never affirmed it. She never agreed. She did not confess it. All she said to Elijah, Elijah is that you gave a word and I'm standing on that word. And the word stabilized the matter. Until, they went, until he, he followed her back home. The, the Bible says, Elisha laid on the boy. Bread on the boy. Until the boy's body became hot. It, it, it came out. Why? The boy did, was not allowed to begin to smell. He wasn't allowed to be stiff. The Bible says that uh, his body became warm. Became what? Warm. He left the boy. But the boy had become... See, he had, the, the word had started to recreate again. See, the same word that worked in the, in the beginning, that created... The word in the present stabilized. Are you following dimensions in this woman's life? Where the word is playing those two roles. Now in the future, the word is recreated again. Until the boy sneezed seven times. Which meant that this life is, for, is, is complete. Say stand on the word. I'm, I'm praying for someone today. 
whatever you are believing God for, Mashika Labranda Satole Brakatosh, Ingadile Brodo Sotolia, Rikatosh, Shakalbos. Whatever you are believing God for, be it in your bloodline. Be it in your bloodline. Be it that you were born with it. Be it that it had happened to different people in your family. La Cos Calibranda Sitelia, Rotosh Calaba. I stand in my office and I decree in the name that's above every other name. A recreation in the name of Jesus. I decree whatever needs to be altered in your body, whatever needs to be stabilized in your system, I speak the word. The word that never fails, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I decree recreation in the name of Jesus. I speak, be stabilized in the name of Jesus. Whatever situation that had gone out of control, had gone out of, had gone awire, and it looks as if what is going on, if what is going, what is going on, I speak peace in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. A God that creates, a God that Controls. Mashika Labas. Soto. I sense some people believing God for things that only God can do. But I have a good news for someone that I serve a God that remains the same. He says, Who is, who was, and who will. The Almighty. His power never diminish. His power is strong. His power is mighty. Is there anyone that wants God to do the impossible? Lift up your hand and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You are believing God. Mashala Baligede. Hilo Borogoto. Matalia. The God that makes impossibility possible. The God that controls the times and the seasons. The God that rules over the affairs of men. The almighty God. The self-existing God. With whom nothing shall be impossible. Shala gale baligado. Begin to speak the word. Speak to that, that situation. Speak to that situation. Shala gala balaganos. Metali balige de bo shalaba. Rebos kala balazoto le bo. Ilari bagada basan na la bas shalabo. Ele malia kola bas setelia. Roketele balarona sato la balagada. Ikalagada, speak a word, speak a word. Mashalabos, intalazitelebo, rabas shalabos, eketebos, ezalabro nozoto leba, leketele balagados, inkalabro nozoto legedebos, inkalalalalalala malegedebos, indalibro nozoto leba digados. In Kalaba Shalabu, in Kalebro Nosotole Balagado, in Galagadagada, Mushalabu. Oh, thank you, Lord. Malagos, in Katalabu, in Libra Galos, make it Mushalabu. In the name of Jesus. Not one thing. One of the main reasons why God established the church. One of the main reasons why he established the church. 
the people at the time had experienced Jesus, the ministry of the Almighty God, in the midst of them, where he fed thousands, he healed the sick, he opened the blind eyes, lives were saved. So when he was living, he knew that they have tasted me. They have, t- they have tasted me. I need to create a platform whereby, even though I'm physically upset, they can still taste me. When God brings a church together, a people together, it's a place to taste God. To do what? To taste God. He that cometh to me must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. I want to speak to the Lord this morning. I want to taste you. I want to taste. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I want to experience God. 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 I want to experience. I want to have an experience. I want to have a personal encounter. I want to have my own story. I want to be able to lift up my hand and say, that's Jesus you're talking about. I met him. Lord, let me experience you. I want to experience you every day. I want you to, the things I've heard in the Bible, I want you to do it in my time, in my life, in my family. Let me be a partaker of these encounters. Let me be said I heard. Lord, let me experience Whatever you are going through, Lord, use this as my own personal experience of you. Mashikalo salo rabasikiti into lava. And if you are here or watching us online, wherever you are in the world, Jesus wants you to taste Him because He's good, He's faithful. Is mighty, is awesome. There's no one like him. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can think or imagine. All you need to do is to invite him to your life. Ask him to be your Lord and your Savior. Ask him to come and be in control of your life. Surrender all to him. Cease from your worry and your struggle. Just tell him, Lord, I invite you into my life. Come and be the Lord and master of my life. Forgive me of of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for saving my soul. Just thank him. He knocks at the door. You open it, he enters. He dines with you. As you have prayed that prayer, you have become a new person. 